Now that we've talked about the general mechanism of acetals, let's talk about a more specific mechanism. Namely, how do we add and remove our protecting group acetal, or GOBEs? Now, I've drawn out the basic summary. If you want to take a double bond O, and of course it has to be either a ketone or an aldehyde, and turn it into your protecting group, you do that by using H plus and two OHs that are linked by two carbons. It's called a diol, a carbon chain with two alcohols. And if you want to go the opposite direction, you want to take your protecting group and remove it going forward, turn it back into the double bond O, you'll use H3O positive. Now, if you've watched my other acetal mechanism video, you've pretty much already seen the mechanism of how this is done. But I figured I'd do one specific to orgo beats just so if you weren't fully clear, you can kind of work through the mechanism a second time. Now, of course, we still have the same rules as every other acetal. You can only make it with aldehydes and ketones, which means things that are that, which means double bond O's that have only carbons and hydrogens connected to them. The acetals must be formed in H plus in acidic conditions to be formed, so that's why it's always H plus or HCO positive to break or make these. And because we're in acidic conditions, we should never see any negative charges when we draw out the whole mechanism. With that said, let's look at the forward and backward mechanism. Let's do forward first. So we're going to start with our aldehyde or our ketone. I'm going to just stick to a ketone for this one. And we have H+. Plus. Since we have H+, plus conditions, and when we're in acidic conditions, the first step of any mechanism, if you see H+, plus or some good acid, is always to protonate. And the only thing floating around that could grab that proton right now is our double bond O. So that double bond O grabs the hydrogen and becomes double bond OH positive. And if you watched my previous acetal video, you know that what's going to happen next is this double bond O is going to want to resonate up to neutralize itself, but at the same time, something is going to come in and attack this carbon. In these mechanisms, we should never see negative charges, but we should also never see positives on carbon. We'll see positives on oxygen all the time, but never carbon. We should not see it on carbon. And so what happens next is this will resonate up and become an OH, but what happens at the same time is our HOR group, which in this case is our diol, HOR, will come in and one of these two oxygens will attack this carbon. The only difference between using a diol like this and HOCH3 like I used in the other video is that this, the, two, the two HOR groups that we're using are connected by the same carbon chain. We saw that at the end of the regular acetal mechanism, we ended up adding two separate OCH3s. In this case, the OCH3s are just connected to each other like this. So what's going to happen is the same thing as what we saw before. The OH comes in, attacks the double bond O, resonate up, and that means that that whole thing is going to be attached over here. The oxygen that did the attack, the hydrogen that was sticking off of it, the two carbons, and the OH that was connected to them. And of course the oxygen that does the attack will become positive because it used up its, alo its lone pairs to make that bond. Now what happens is we want to remove a proton. Now, in the previous video, I showed you two separate steps. Remove this proton, and then protonate this OH. The reason why I did that was because I wanted to emphasize showing the hemiacetal intermediate. And for your purposes, you should be able to recognize the fact that this is two separate protonation steps. First, deprotonate this oxygen by moving this bond here to neutralize that oxygen giving you OH, O neutral carbon carbon OH, and then just like in just like before, what we're going to do is we want the OH to leave, so we want to protonate that OH. So, and by OH I mean the original OH we had the the oxygen that we started with, this oxygen here. So we want this oxygen to leave as water, so we're going to give it its own H plus. And so the net result is. H2O positive here, and O over there. We know that it's this OH we want to protonate because we want this OH to leave. In our final product, we know that it should look like this. 
where the two oxygens connected by the carbons come together. We want these two oxygens, namely these two oxygens, to still be in the final product. If I chlorinate one of these two, those OHs are going to be the ones that want to leave, but that's not what we want. We want them to be there in the final product. Now, what I was trying to get at here is, this is technically two separate steps. Deprotonate this, then protonate this. But what you'll see your TAs and even your professor do sometimes is kind of skip one of these two steps. Rather than going through this intermediate, what you can show is that since we know this OH needs to get protonated and this oxygen needs to get deprotonated, we can do what's called an intramolecular proton transfer, where this OH grabs the hydrogen off the other one to neutralize it. And this is acceptable in a mechanism question. You are allowed to show this, and you'll see your TAs and your professor do this all the time to save space and time when drawing out mechanisms. But always be aware that you have to remember, technically it is two separate steps. The drawings that I just erased, those are valid intermediates. So if you ever get given a question that says, pick which of the following is an intermediate or is not an intermediate from the following acetal formation, you should be able to recognize that the hemiacetal, the one where both are neutral, is a valid intermediate. But for the sake of saving time and space, we're just gonna say, okay, it's an intramolecular proton transfer that happens here. The OH that we want to leave, grab the proton and puts the electrons on the oxygen, and that will give us what I had drawn before and accidentally erased. H2O positive on the oxygen we want to leave, and oxygen neutral on the oxygen we don't want to leave. Now here comes the important step that I'm gonna keep repeating. I have a good leaving group, and on that very same carbon, I have an oxygen that is either negative or neutral. In this case, it's neutral. And what I know is this leaving group wants to leave, but what's going to happen to make it leave is the other oxygen that shares that carbon comes down, forms a double bond, and kicks that H2O out. Now I'm left with a double bond O that is connected to two carbons and an OH. Now we're very close to our final product. Because once again, we have the double bond O positive that we know wants to resonate up, and that's going to draw something to attack this carbon, namely the other oxygen we want to attach there, the other OH that we didn't use yet. Now we will have the two oxygens on that very same carbon, and this one's just going to be OH positive because it still had that hydrogen to begin with. So your final very last step is to deprotonate that oxygen and make it neutral. Bring those electrons up, and you're done. You have your protecting group added. Okay? And so that's how you're going to add the protecting group. You need H plus and a diol. Does it, you'll usually see just a two carbon diol, but I have seen a three carbon diol used in the past. So something that looks like this, where there are three carbon, uh, let me draw that nicer, where there are three carbons connecting the two OHs, so like this. One, two, three, and that would just give you a six-membered ring instead of a three, uh, five-membered ring. So it would look something like this is your final product. Either way, um, the mechanism is exactly the same. Now, what if I wanted to undo this? What if I wanted to break apart my protecting group and turn it back into my double bond O? How would I do that in terms of mechanism? Well, once again, what I showed you in the last video is that Every intermediate in these reactions going forward will match up with the intermediate of it going backwards. So if you want to write both the forward and backward mechanism on your note card, by all means, go ahead. But I think it's much better to understand the fundamentals behind each step and commit those more to memory than to your note card. Because very often what we'll do is we'll give you different starting materials but ask you to draw the same mechanism. So if you don't have the fundamental understanding of how it works, that note card isn't going to do much for you. So let's see, here are my intermediates. Let me erase these arrows. Here are all the intermediates that I drew before. And now I just have to say, okay, well, what goes over the arrow to bring me this way all the way back to the double bond O? If all of the intermediates are the same, the only thing that changes are the arrows that get me there and the reactants over the arrow. Now I showed you before, if you want to remove the protecting group, you need H3O positive. H3O positive, at first, it's just a very good acid. What happens is, your one of the two oxygens of the ring will grab that proton and kick out water. And that's how we get to our first intermediate going backwards, the ring that is OH positive. 
Now, as we saw before, when we have OH positive, or if we have some good leaving group on the same carbon as another oxygen that has lone pairs, that oxygen can swing down, form a double bond, and kick that OH out. And we know we want to do this because we know we're trying to separate these two pieces out. When we're finished, we should have this double bond O plus the diol that we started with. And so we need to chop these two bonds off. Well, we've officially chopped one of them off now. We've got our double bond O positive and our OH neutral. And just like what we saw before, whenever we have double bond O positive, that double bond O is gonna to wanna to resonate up to neutralize the oxygen. And at the same time, something's going to attack here. Now, this is the part where a lot of students get stuck. What attacks here? Is it the OH that we used earlier? Well, if we had this OH attack, we'd just be going back to what we started with. Remember, there's a total of three oxygens involved in this reaction two from your diol, and one from your starting carbonyl, which means we need to bring in that third oxygen. Namely, we need to bring in water. So what happens in our next step is over the arrow, some water is gonna float in. And that is going to be what attacks your double bond O. And so that's how we get H2O positive over here, and this oxygen is now neutral. Now once again, we know what we want. We want to split this bond. We want to kick out our diol if we're working towards this. And that means we want to keep this OH over here. As we see here, our goal is to have an OH and make this want to leave by protonating it. Once again, you have two options depending on how thorough you want to be. You can either draw out first a deprotonation step, remove this hydrogen, make this neutral, and then a second step after that, protonate this to bring you there, or if you wanted to save some time, save some space, what you can do is, again, an intramolecular proton transfer. Show that the oxygen you want to leave grabs the proton from the oxygen you don't want to leave. In terms of mechanism questions, again, either method is valid. You'll get full credit for either or. But always remember that the two intermediates, the one after this gets deprotonated, and the one at, further after that, where this half gets protonated to become that, both of those are intermediates. We're just skipping drawing one of them to save time. So now we're at this point. We have an OH and a good leaving group on the same carbon. And if I haven't stressed it enough, we should know what happens here now. The OH will resonate down to kick our leaving group out. Our oxygen with lone pairs will kick out our leaving group by forming a double bond. And so now we're almost done. We've liberated our diol. Our diol is now happy and free as OH, OH with two carbons connecting it. And we just have to turn this double bond OH back into a neutral double bond O. And as usual, we just draw from the bond to the oxygen to show it getting deprotonated, and we are done. Here is the mechanism of the reverse reaction or the removal of your protecting group with HGO positive.